Hey guys, welcome back to another Ncurses tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be uh, part two in my Centering Text in Ncurses tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to be addressing the problem we had at the end of the last tutorial where, uh, say, if our window was 10 characters long and the text was like 20, 30 characters long, longer than 10 characters, it just wouldn't show the strain at all. It just wouldn't print. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing it so instead of it just not showing text, it would break the first line at 10 characters and then the rest of the characters wrap, so on and so on. That's kind of the expected behavior. So today's tutorial, that's what we're going to be kind of addressing and fixing. So let's get right into it. As always, if you want to support the channel, give this video a thumbs up um, and comment down below. I try to respond to all questions and comments and uh, consider subscribing as well. That way you see these videos right when they come out. But anyways, let's get started. So right off the bat, I've added some things to the code from the previous tutorial. So I'm just going to go over those now and you guys can add them into your code if you're following along. So the first thing I added was uh, this signature for the split string function. I'll go into detail about this later in the tutorial, but for now you should just know that it returns a string array. It's called split string. It takes a string, uh, an int and an int reference as its parameters. Again, I'll go into more detail later. The next thing I've added is we're going to, I created a window here and this window is going to be a centered window um, that's exactly half the width and height of the screen. So just for demonstration, I'll show you what that, that looks like. So it's going to be about this size. Um, I am going to get rid of the box border just because it'll screw up printing later. Um, so, but that's just what it, that's the size and dimensions of it. I've created this because it'll be a little easier to test the printing of long lines if it's on a window that's a little smaller than the screen. Um, so because I've added this, I have to change the code down here as well because we're printing in a window instead of standard screen now. So we have to print in that win and refresh that win instead of standard refresh. We also need to um, change the row. Actually, I guess we don't need to change the row. We can leave that at zero. Um, and then what we can uh, also, something else I had to change was down here was the um, function signature. I added uh, the full function down here. Um, and again, I'll go into detail about this in a few minutes. So the problem we had in our last tutorial was, technically speaking, this should be printing the string out. But for some reason, when we run the code, we just get blank. We don't, we don't get any string. Now, if we shorten this string down to just hello world, and we run it again, you'll see we get the string and it's centered. So what the heck's going on? So what's really going on here is the math we have uh, seems good until we reach um, a, a case we didn't check for. So essentially what, what's happening is, say we have a window here, it's about this length, and we're getting the center column, see? So the center column might be like here, right? Um, then we're gonna take half the length of the string, which again, if the string is like this length, for instance, then if you take half the length of the string and subtract it from this, you're going to get a positive number out because um, you're subtracting it from a bigger number. If center column is bigger than half length, you're going to get a positive number. But if center column is less than half length, you're going to get a negative number. And then you're going to pass a negative number into move w print w and move w print number you can't handle negative columns. It doesn't know what that is. It just doesn't print. It gives you an error probably. It errors silently because it doesn't and the compiler or it doesn't end the code it just errors and doesn't print so just to demonstrate that this is what's going on i'm gonna i added this little bit here to just it's basically debugging it's gonna print um, our adjusted call and then wait for input um, before it prints so we get to see what that number actually is so again i'll make and run and you'll see lo and behold our column our adjusted column is negative 41. so obviously move w print w is going to flip out and not know what to do but if we shorten this down to just hello world again, and we run the code again, you'll see that 16, that's a positive number, and we get the correct output. So in order to handle this, what we're kind because of, like, imagine what we're kind of expecting, we want it, if it's more lines than it can handle, we want it to wrap to the next line, but it doesn't do that. And how, we, how do we do that? So the way we're going to go about doing that is we're going to take our input string here and we're going to split it into multiple lines and then we're going to print each of those lines individually. And that's what this function down here is going to do. It's going to split these lines or it's going to split the string into lines for us. So that's what this, that's why it returns a string array. It's going to return a string with, um, or sorry, it's going to return an array with 
uh, the number of strings that are lines in the uh, string. Sorry, that's confusing. So for instance, if uh, we have to split our line into, or split our string into three lines, it's gonna be a string array with length three. That's what this is gonna return. Then for the first parameter for this function, we pass it the string that we're trying to split. So in this case, it would be hello world, but I'm actually gonna go back and switch that to the long string. So it, our string would be this long string here. Um, then um, max length, the max length parameter is gonna be the max length of each line. Um, so if, you know, if our window was 10 wide, it would be a max length of 10 kind of thing. And then this int refer or this int, yeah, this rep, this int reference is going to be, it's going to contain the number of lines within the, um, string array when the execution is done so that the calling function knows how many lines are in the array kind of thing. So I put some helpful comments in here to kind of guide the tutorial along and help me remember what goes into this function essentially. So uh, the first thing we actually need to do is we need to calculate the number of full lines uh, that we're gonna get once we split the code, or split the string. So the way we do that is we take, so we're gonna create a, an integer of full lines. So in order to figure out how many full lines we have in this function is we take the length of the function and we divide that by the max length. So for instance, the reason why we're doing that is, for instance, maybe our string is 30 characters long, but we have a max length of 10. That means we're gonna divide 30 by 10 and we're gonna get three because that's the number, you know, you can fit 10 characters in each line and that's 30 characters splits evenly into three lines. So the problem is what happens if you have an uneven number or say we have 32 characters and our max length is 10. Then we're gonna have three full lines and we're gonna have two leftover characters. So that's like a third line or a fourth line essentially. So we need to calculate the number of remaining characters we have. So that calculation is very similar to the previous one. We're just gonna take the length and we're gonna use the modulus instead of the division operator. Um, and what this will do is it's gonna tell us how many are, are left over. So instead of giving us 30, or sorry, three, it's gonna give us two if the input is uh, 32 characters long and uh, our max length is 10. That's great, but now we need to calculate the number of actual lines we have. So this is where we're gonna set our num lines variable. Uh, our num lines is gonna be at least equal to the number of full lines we have. No matter what, it's gonna be equal to the number of full lines we have. It might be more, and that's what we're gonna handle next. So if it's more than the number of full lines, um, we'll know if it is or not, if there are any remaining characters. If there are zero remaining characters, that means there's exactly full lines number of lines. If there's more than zero remaining characters, that means there's full lines plus one. So we'll do if remaining character, remaining car chars is greater than zero, we'll say num lines plus plus. So no matter what, the most it can be is full lines plus one. Because at that point, you'd have either more full lines or you'd have exactly the number of full lines. So uh, the next step, we're gonna take our uh, string and actually split it now into lines. So first we need to actually create an array to hold it. So std string star, um, we'll call it split, equals new std string, and then it's gonna have a length of number of lines like that. Then we can do a little for loop just to iterate through every index. So i equals zero, i is less than num lines, i plus plus like that. Uh, so what we're gonna do to actually split this string into lines is we're gonna use the um, string substring function. So uh, I guess to start off, I'll say, we'll, we're, so for each iteration, we're split or setting index i equal to to split dot substring. Now substring takes a starting position and a length. So um, we need to figure out the starting position of each iteration. So the starting position for every iteration is gonna be equal to i times our max length. The reason why this is the case is, again, I'll use the example where max length is 10. Say um, we're at the first iteration, we wanna get characters zero through nine, correct? So if, if, if this is the zeroth iteration, we're gonna get zero times max length, which is zero, that's the first starting position. Um, then if we're doing uh, the second iteration, which where i is one, then we get max length, which is 10 to again, 19, which is what we want. So that'll give us the starting position at each iteration. So starting position, and then the length we're gonna get every time is max length. So that'll be again, for the first iteration it'll be zero with a you know, max length of 10 or whatever 
you know, so um, this will split our screen into the number of lines it requires. Um, and then at the end here, we actually have to return that string. So we'll return split. Okay. All right, so we've created this function. Now we actually have to implement it in our code. So I'm gonna get rid of this line we added because it's unnecessary um, for the most part. Um, and I'm actually probably just gonna rewrite this whole function. So we'll start from scratch. Let's think about what this print centered function actually needs to do. So what it needs to do is it needs to take our input string and it needs to split it into lines. So each iteration, the center column is always gonna be the same. Uh, each iteration, the, the half length column is not gonna be the same. So that's gonna get moved down. Um, so first we need to know our number of lines. So we're gonna create that variable and just set it equal to zero. Then we can call our um, split lines function and put it into our uh, string array. We'll call it lines. And so we'll create that string array lines and we'll have it be equal to split string text. Um, then for our max length, we're gonna pass it win max x. And then we're gonna pass it num lines so that that num lines uh, variable will contain our number of lines when this is done executing. So that's great. So now what we have to do is iterate each over each of these lines and actually print them to the screen. So we'll do int i equals zero, i is less than number of lines, i plus plus like that. And within that, we can calculate the half length each time. So the half length is gonna be the same for all the lines which are of max length. But once we get to that last line, it, it could change. So that's why we have to calculate half length each time we iterate. Then we're also gonna to need to adjust, uh, calculate our adjusted column because our half length changes each time as well. So within this function, then we can go ahead and print, uh, move w, print w, but we can change our code a little bit because we need to have it print at start row plus i, because for each iteration, so for the first one, that'll be equal to just start row, then it'll be equal to start row plus one, start row plus two, so on. Um, and I believe, at this point, everything should work. Um, let's hope so. Make and run. So what are we missing here? Uh, oh, I just put a comma instead of a semicolon. Do a make and run. All right, we didn't get the output we were expecting. So something here is wrong. So win max x. Oh, I figured out what's wrong. So what we need to do here is instead of doing half length of our text, we need to do half length of the individual lines. So lines i length like that. And then we also need to print lines i. So lines i like that. Now, I believe that should do it. Uh, lines i. Oh yeah, sorry. Lines i dot c string like that. All right. Now we go, there we go. So, hello world, this is a really long string too, and then it splits, demonstrates centering, but if it's two, and then, ooh, long. So, as you can see, this is hard splitting. It's splitting uh, no matter what, even if there's a word at the boundary. So, for instance, if I change this text to uh, uh, long string and chiropractor, I just wanted to pick a long word. I don't know why I picked chiropractor. You'll see that it cuts chiropractor off in the middle of the word. Um, but in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is talk about how to have it, instead of hard splitting, we'll have it word wrap. So it'll, it'll only wrap on word boundaries. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys liked that tutorial. I know it was kind of a longer one. Um, I hope it made sense. There's a lot of you know math and hand waving and, and stuff going on in it. But yeah, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. and um, if you have any questions feel free to comment below um, anyways i uh, hope you guys have a great rest of the day and i'll see you in the next tutorial